Question 16 says a ball is thrown directly downward with an initial speed of 8.2 meters per second from a height of 29.8 meters. After what time interval does it strike the ground? Now, I, I actually redid this uh, this question because I was um, I created the answer um, a couple of pro probably about four months ago for this question, and I'm rewatching some of these, and I, I absolutely didn't like how I worked this at all. Um, and some new information, I, I didn't know at the time that I was making the original videos for Chapter 2 that all of the questions for the test have to be answered symbolically. And so I'm going to show you how to answer this question symbolically, and then the, qu the answer should come much faster. So let's write down what is known. First of all, we know the initial velocity is equal to 8.2 meters per second. And we we can um, we can define our term. So if we if we make this our our axis, and we say that down is negative y and up is positive y, then this would be a negative a negative 8.2. Let me let me just write this negative 8.2 meters per second. That's our initial velocity. The other thing we know is that there's a change of x, a change of height of 29.8 29.8 meters. So the in, the in, uh, final minus initial is going to equal, uh, and it'll be a, a downward, so it could be, we can call it negative 29.8 if we want. And then um, after what time interval? So, and then we know the, it's going downward so that we know the acceleration is equal to negative 9.8. So we can call that negative 29.8 is the change of x, negative 9.8 meters, meters per second squared is the, is the acceleration. What we don't know, we don't know the final velocity, and we don't know the time it took. So we're, the question asks us to find the time, uh, but every question that we um, have, every equation that we have that uh, requires time, um, that where we n need to know the time, we need to know the final velocity. For example, we could solve the time by saying the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2 times time equals the change of x, and we could solve for time using this equation, but we would need to know the final velocity. Well, it just so happens that I like that equation, so we're going to use it. We'll go ahead and solve for time, so um, the, the, the initial velocity plus the final velocity times, times t equals 2 times the the change of x, and then we could we could divide by um, this term. So we would have the time equals two delta x over the initial velocity plus the final velocity. We still don't know what the final velocity is, so we need to find uh, an equation where we can solve for final velocity that doesn't have time. Well, it just so happens that there's an equation uh, that you can derive by combining uh, two different equations. It's in your textbook, it's on uh, page 36 if you're using the College Physics Hybrid um, ninth edition. It's on page uh, 36, it's equation 210. And it shows you how to derive it. I'm not going to show you. Um, but it's, uh, it, the equation is um, the, the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared uh, plus 2a change of x. And then to find the final velocity, all you got to do is take the square root of both sides, so you get that the final velocity is equal to the square root of the initial velocity squared plus 2a delta x. Now all we have to do at this point is take this and substitute it, because this equals the final velocity, we can substitute it right in there for the final velocity, and we don't even need to know the final velocity anymore. So when I rewrite this, I should get that the time equals 2 delta x over the initial velocity plus, and instead of putting the final velocity, I'm going to put what the final velocity equals. The square root of the initial velocity squared plus 2a delta x. So that's all under that bar. And so here we have a symbolic equation, and we can plug in numbers. So we have that the time is equal to 2 times the change of x. We said um, 29.8 divided by the initial velocity we said was... Um, 
And actually, to be consistent, we'll call this a negative 29.8. So we said it's it's a downward, and so and then divided by the initial velocity, which we said was negative 8.2 plus the square root of um, and negative 8.2 squared is just going to be the same as 8.2 squared. So 8.2 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 29, negative 29.8. So these combine to make a positive number as well. So we'll simplify this a little bit. We'll get that the time is equal to negative uh, 59.6 divided by negative 8.2 plus the square root of in the 8.2 squared 67 67.24 plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 29.8 is positive 584.08 now let's go ahead and uh, simplify a little bit further what I'm going to do here is add these together and take the square root. But you got to remember when you're dealing with square roots that um, your answer is going to be plus or minus. So you have to uh, pick which one makes sense. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. The square root of, of this is going to be, um, so we'll have that the time is equal to negative 59.6 divided by negative 8.2 plus or minus, And that'll be 25.52097. So 25. 0.52097. Now, uh, the thing you got to keep in mind is if we do if we do plus, we're going to have a positive on top and a negative on on bottom. And time uh, cannot equal negative, so we're going to go with the minus. So the one that makes sense with with our situation. So um, time is equal to 1.76. 7446 seconds. Now what you might want to do is take that number and if you want to check your work, plug um just put it put together a formula for say for example change of x is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. You could take an equation like that and plug in all your values and see if you come up with the right change of x. That's uh, one strategy to, to uh, go about it. Or any number, any of the other equations that you've learned from this chapter, and you can, you can check your work. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video.